if you go and purchase an album and the album has no music in it, you'd be like, what is this? You told me that there was an album in here and I open up the disc and there's no CD or there's no music in the CD. And that is basically the same thing here. This is a bit of a scam. Here, this is a uh, festive owl. I've been speaking with sources about what exactly transpired and how things went so far downhill for Sunday on Frank Ocean uh, for Coachella. The stage production was supposed to and did contain an ice rink that was constructed and ready to go. Okay. Uh, he was an hour and a half late and they were all waiting in the fucking cold, apparently, and, and in the silence uh, because there's nothing else to watch. He's hour late to the set. The reason why he's an hour late to the set, by the way, is because... Of this, Frank decided at the last minute that he no longer wanted it at all, the ice rink. All of the people walking around him at the start of the performance were actually ice skaters, had been practicing for weeks, and were supposed to be skating as a part of the production. Coachella had to deconstruct the approved stage that had been planned and signed off on for months in advance, melt the entire ice rink, and then set it up how Frank decided with no warning. This all happened when doors had already opened for Sunday, and people were securing their spots to see him. If the last minute changes weren't made, he wouldn't have performed at all, leaving the festival without a closing headliner. Frank also personally pulled the plug at the last second on the live stream, which left a very sour taste in, the, in uh, many inside Coachella's mouths. Ultimately, and I quote, it just didn't seem like he wanted to be there, but was obligated to be. Everything, including him, fell apart last minute. Don't expect to see any coverage from the festival about the set, something that is unprecedented in the history of Coachella. The relationship is not in a good place right now. <clears throat> I worked on that ice rink. We all thought it was super dumb, but awesome at the same time. We lugged those heavy fake rocks, set up lights and uh, around and beneath it. It was going to be so dope. The stage and production crew morale really dropped when we found out it wasn't being used. Hundreds of man hours, blood, sweat, and tears for nothing. In part, that's just how it goes. But in reality, everyone was super upset. We did hours and hours of work only to scrap it hours before. So, um, you know, there are there, Sean C had a take on it. Let's take a look. Sean C is very level-headed. Uh, I'm a fan of his. Uh, let's see what he has to say about it. But this is like the major uh, Coachella drama. Other than that, I saw all my friends, uh, you know, having a wonderful time at Coachella. But this year, it does feel a little bit less. Maybe because I didn't go, so I wasn't in it. So it's different for me. But like experiencing it from the outside, maybe because it was a creator clash that was happening simultaneously for me, I didn't really see too much Coachella. Like, I did not see a lot of, of movement, momentum. I didn't see a lot of media around it. But, yeah, let's take a look. You know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. This, this, is, this is insane. This is crazy. I swear to God, it took me six, seven, almost eight times of scrolling past this video for me to realize it was Frank Ocean. I thought this was a video of some random dude that has nothing to do with some performer set hopping on stage and just going crazy to one of the songs. I thought it was a random. If you would have told me this was Frank Ocean performing one of his songs at Coachella, something that people have been waiting so long for, have flown from God knows wherever to come see, I would not have believed you if I didn't hear the sound. Obviously, we all love Frank Ocean. He's a goat, in my opinion, very influential. Um, almost started a whole new wave of R&B. His blueprint, his sound, his aesthetic is being used even with him being absent from the musical scene or space all this part for is true, over yes. six, seven years. Regardless of all these accomplishments and how much people adore Frank Ocean. He's got four good songs. It's crazy. Listen, bro. No, I, I don't know why everybody does this when it's like, oh, I've been known. Like, I knew he sucked. Anytime, like, somebody fucking has, like, a, a, a shit moment, like, everybody fucking piles on, and then they just, like, take it one step further, and they're like, he only has four good songs. Like, shut the fuck up. No, his entire discography is awesome, okay? Shut up. You can be honest about that while simultaneously being like, it's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. No, he's not fucking overrated, dude. That's insane, okay? That's insane. 
that should not make him feel entitled to wasting people's time in the way I feel he did with this performance. Now, from what I've heard, I don't think Frank has lost any of his vocal capabilities, any of his technical talents. I don't think any of that has been lost, even though he hasn't released anything new for people to verify since 2016. Frank is kind of like the musical equivalent of playing hard to get, but with his fans. And ironically yeah. enough, kind of needs them to support the career it's a strange relationship because he is one of the few acts i feel like fans have to actually genuinely put effort into trying to experience in a live setting like person to person he's extremely elusive just digitally speaking it, it feels almost impossible to reach him in person and there's absolutely nothing wrong with keeping that illusion and maintaining that distance privacy and curtain man gay gives himself from his fans dude what do you mean oh god the expectation that people have from a fucking artist is insane i think everybody's so used to people like myself people that are like in uh, the online sphere giving people everything giving fans everything in their entire lives that people have this like incredibly high bar for content creators where they're like yeah, it's not just like, I can't just like listen to his music. I need to know everything that's going on in his fucking life. It's crazy. It's even crazy for someone like myself, but it's especially crazy for someone like him whose main content isn't his like personality or whatever. No, nah, he don't like his fans. That's accurate. Yeah, the reason why people say he doesn't like his fans is because, uh, I mean, he, it, it's it's the the lack of releases. I think that's where that comes from for the most part. At least when Nicki Minaj has long bouts of not making music, she's still constantly and consistently interacting with her fan base, and she's also uh, doing features and whatnot. So I think that's the main difference uh, between someone like Nicki Minaj and someone like Frank Ocean uh, and, and how they are received. Whereas Frank Ocean is like cryptic. He's, uh, he's very much uh, distant from his fan base. Um. I think that's the reason why they're doing that. <clears throat> Playboy Cardi would never do that to his fans, and also people booed Drake at Tyler's concert, and this shows why people were wrong about this dude. He probably canceled that too. Wait, what? The reality is absolutely nobody can know what's going on behind the scenes except him and his label. I bet his contract might be a little better than others, but he's not 100% independent in the music industry. I mean, mm. no, I Maybe don't. a veil, if you'll say, between you and your audience, but you can't promise live performances and be that same person as well. People aren't going to a live show to basically watch you reenact a studio session. These are fans, yes, but you are still performing for them. And if there are Frank Ocean fans who see this and you are- I'm, I'm literally just, here's the thing. I'm separating the, the fandom's expectation out of Frank Ocean versus the performance at Coachella because the performance at Coachella is something that you should and absolutely are valid to criticize. Okay. That's unacceptable. It's like, especially after such a long stint of like not giving anything, like not, not having anything else going on. Uh, he might, he might have something in his like real life. He might have something going on in his personal life or anything like that. But Frank owes you nothing. But a Coachella performance in exchange for the $600 ticket you pay for. Exactly. Exactly. That's my point. If you're a fucking Frank Ocean fan and you go to Coachella to see Frank Ocean and then Frank Ocean doesn't actually, uh, you know, and, and Frank Ocean doesn't give you uh, 100%, that's crazy. No, you, you bought a service and he didn't give it to you. I think that's kind of fucked up. Ice skaters killed his family. What? Jesus Christ. Are completely on his side and stand for him no matter what he does. And you, in some frame of your mind, take it as an offensive thing to be called a performer when that's what you're there to do, then you shouldn't be doing it. I know there are plenty that will retort with, uh, you know, there's tragedy amongst his family. He's got personal problems going on. And yeah, that's brother completely died, right? understandable. I, I can only imagine what he went through having lost who he lost, and whatever other personal problems he could be going through. But that isn't your job to think about. You drop bread, you need service. That's how business operates or how it should. This I isn't agree. a restaurant where if you don't like what you've been served, you might get a chance at another item on the menu or possibly your money back. You are wasting hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to attend Coachella. 
you should not defend a subpar performance. Now, this is a tweet from the Festive Owl that says, I, I've I been speaking be with sources about exactly what transpired and how things went so far downhill Sunday for Frank Ocean in Coachella. So, here you go. The stage production was supposed to and did contain an ice rink that was constructed and ready to go. Frank decided at the last minute that he no longer wanted it at all. All of the people walking around him at the start of the performance were actual ice skaters, had been practicing for weeks, and were supposed to be skating as part of the production. Coachella had to deconstruct the approved stage that had been planned and signed off on for months in advance, melt the entire ice rink, and then set it up how Frank decided today with no warning, which is what you ended up seeing and caused the hour long delay. This all happened when doors had already opened for Sunday and people were securing their spots to see him. If the last minute changes weren't made, he wouldn't have performed at all, leaving the festival without a closing headliner. Frank also personally pulled the plug at the last second on the live stream, which left a very sour taste in many inside Coachella's mouths. That, that sounds awful. Why, why'd, you, why'd you tweet it like that? I don't know. Ultimately, and I quote, it just didn't seem like he wanted to be there, but he was obligated. Everything, including him, fell apart last minute. Don't expect to see any coverage from the festival about the set, something that is unprecedented in the history of Coachella. The relationship is not in a good place right now. And when I read something like that, all I can think about is the inconsideration and the lack of care to the people who act as accents to the main star himself, the ornaments to the Christmas tree, the icing on the cake, the people who aid in making the experience what it is, but remain nameless for the sake of the star, for the sake of highlighting and maintaining attention on the main performer. Again, I'm no stranger to feeling completely different to something that I had been planning for a long time at the last minute and just not wanting to do it or foregoing the whole thing altogether. But I'm also not wasting anyone's time, threatening anyone's enjoyability for the night. I think he owns his fans a little more than one album in nine years. I mean, even that I like, like, what do you mean? Like, no, nobody owes you anything. Just don't be a fan then. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's so dumb. The 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 entitlement from uh, like fandom is crazy to me sometimes. And I say this as someone who gives everything to his fan base, okay? Literally everything. And motherfuckers still demand more from me. You know what I mean? I just don't get it. I I don't I don't understand where this comes from. Like I I don't know why people are I I don't know. I find it frustrating when people uh say stuff like that. I find it frustrating when, when I hear people be like, he owes more to his fandom. Like, he owes more to his fan base. It's like, but don't be a fan then. I don't know what to tell you. Like, what do you mean? Then don't be a fan. If you if you feel like he doesn't care about you because he hasn't made an album, like, why the fuck are you still, uh, you know, where is this sense of entitlement coming from? Like, why do you have it? You know? However... Selling a service and not performing and not giving you that service that you fucking paid a, a gorillion dollars to when you, like, you know, put together as much money as you possibly could. You're a fucking regular old working class person. Not every single person that goes to Coachella is a fucking influencer, okay? There's a lot of real, normal people that go there because they enjoy the music and they want to see Frank Ocean for the first time in years. And then they, like, literally take time off from work, you know, uh, put their hard-earned dollars together to like listen to fucking Frank Ocean live and then he doesn't give them that that's fucked up they fly out they spend an insane amount of money on like overpriced Airbnbs or hotel rooms and shit like that and then boom you can't even get the one thing that you wanted to see it's fucked up you don't understand music stands don't see their favorites as human for the record uh for people saying he performed a full set from what i understand he was just like lip syncing for half the half the time right i'm a frank dick writer and i wouldn't blame him or feel slighted if he decided to make stop music altogether artists don't owe us anything and their relationship with their art doesn't have a factor in our consent or approval. by stalling my set and running into their curfew time people aren't using some of the money from their work checks to fly across the country to see me here is someone who says they worked on the ice rink we all thought it was super dumb but awesome at the exact same time we lugged those heavy fake rocks, set up lights around and beneath it. It was going to be so dope. The stagehand and production crew morale really dropped when we found out it wasn't being used. Hundreds of man hours, blood, sweat, and tears for nothing. In part, that's just how it goes. But in reality, everyone was super upset. We did hours and hours of work 
only to scrap it hours before. And all I can say is, at least you got paid. But who wants to work in a business where you don't enjoy what you do for a paycheck? If you did, you'd be Frank Ocean because it doesn't seem like he's enjoying what he's doing. Seems like he's going through the motions just for the payment. And that's fine to be in that space where you just don't enjoy creating or you don't feel like doing what you're obligated to do, but at least give a shit enough about what it is that you do, even if you're not currently enjoying what it is that you do, so that other people who still enjoy what they do to help you do what you do, don't feel discouraged and bummed out like this every time you decide last minute to change your mind. I also saw plenty of people saying that Frank Ocean finessed Coachella, like this was the biggest finesse of all time. You're not finessing the company that you're agreeing to do a service for. You're finessing your own fans, fans the yeah. people who are going to be there when the deal with whatever company you're working with ends. Like I said, it's okay to be elusive digitally, but when you have people actually... What is your Frank Ocean, just Drake dancing? This is what they're talking about. Like, that's crazy. He's just vibing. His ass is not performing. Yeah, dude. Eating a big ass burrito and coffee, knowing you have to use 100% 100 of porta potty is nightmare fuel. I don't get Coachella logic. This dude paid all the money and got Everyone this. Everyone is mad at Frank Ocean. We're leaving Coachella right now, and this is why. All right, I'm going to start off by saying Frank was over an hour late got there as early as 8 a.m. today. Secondly, he only performed for about 30 minutes max. Only did three of his popular songs. And the biggest thing is he never came out. He was behind the screen the whole entire time. By half the show, it was half empty already. People were leaving the entire time. I'm not saying like it was bad. I mean, that's up to you guys, but um, people feel very scammed today. Why, what, he can't even say it's bad, dude. It's so funny. Like the, the people, Dude, Frank Ocean fans are crazy with it. They're like, nah, I can't even say it's bad. I'm like, you can say it's bad, dude. Like, I don't dislike Frank Ocean, but it's still a fun picture. No, I don't even agree with that. But, um, one, he was one and a half hours late, so we were all standing in the cold and waiting. Two, he would have really, he, he would have really long, weird, silent pauses throughout his set, like two minutes of pure silence. Three, he kept bringing on people, but not even participating in the song, just letting them sing or DJ. There was also a six-minute rave in the middle of his concert. His all-stage setup was made so the audience couldn't see him. No matter how close we were, we couldn't see the stage, so everyone had to watch the screen the whole time. Five, the screen itself would rarely even show him two. You'll see in the videos I will post later, it was like a weird film. Conclusion. People traveled for such a dis far distance to see him, and people had high expectations because he hasn't played in six years, and we all really got disappointed. The whole production was just lacking, and he was just really not bringing much to the whole performance. This part does make sense for the record. I mean, this is a whole ass essay on TikTok, bro. Zoomers, when you don't, Zoomers, when their favorite artist, uh, you know, doesn't give them exactly what they want, will fucking write the Das Kapital of, of uh, TikTok essays, dude. Holy shit. A lot of people left early. Oh, here, this is a... Uh... should not have stepped on that stage at Coachella, and I'm going to tell you why. First and foremost, before I blame anybody else, I'm blaming Coachella. Y'all had this man slated to headline the show since 2020. Obviously, 2020, it could not happen. One, because of COVID. Two, his brother passed away that year. I don't know what kind of timeline y'all put on grief, but this man clearly was not ready to perform. Whether it was him hiding behind scaffolding, singing some song, changing the arrangements of classics like White Ferrari and Chanel, and in general, Frank Ocean just really isn't a performer like that and that's no shade to him at all not a frank baby yeah it's definitely coachella's fault that you know he took a, a four million dollar payment coachella is at fault for paying him four million dollars <laughs> what are they supposed to do put him at fucking gunpoint like fuck coachella but like goddamn you know that's like if you knew you wasn't ready, which I understand if you weren't, you should have asked them to delay your set. You should not have performed this year, and we all know why. And maybe you did try to get them to agree to a different year for you. Bro, you wish you had stands like this one in the trenches defending Frank? Yes, dude. That's what I need. You to perform, and they just said no. But regardless, you did have a contract to honor. And so at the least, even if you didn't want to be there, you should have showed up on time. Especially knowing that Coachella has a strict curfew. To me, coming an hour late to a performance is unacceptable, especially when a curfew is in place. Now, I'm not going to be mad at you like some people for not releasing new music, because if y'all have not caught on, Frank Ocean releases music when Frank Ocean fucking feels like releasing music. So if you got disappointed by no new music, that's on you. But sweetie, People paid thousands of dollars to come and see you perform. Your first performance in over six years. And you telling me you couldn't hit the stage on time? That's just, come on, dog. That's Damn. funny. Damn. Okay. Dude, dude, you're saying dick riding is crazy? But, like, 
even the dick rider is popping off a little bit. But like, that's how you know. I mean, is there like that? <laughs> That's how you know the fandom is turning a little bit. Acceptable. Not only that, but babes, you had kids out there camping since noon at the front of the gate just to see you. They gave up their last day of Coachella to wait for you. And lastly, the fans, listen up. What did y'all expect from him, truthfully? Even if you saw a stream of his last time performing live six years ago, you would know this man just doesn't perform like that. That's not his bag. His bag is making okay, really never mind. good music. Nope, that was just like one second. Now she... Bro, this is insane. This is literally, this is literally like, wait, okay. There was like one brief moment, one brief moment when he's like, I would go so far as say 98% at fault. <laughs> Only a little bit of mild criticism for Frank Ocean. And then even the fans are getting fucking criticized. What the fuck? The parasocial relationship between fans and Frank is so funny because he's given them like nothing all for years. And they're all like, oh, it's not his fault. I hope he's okay. It's because music is incredibly powerful as a medium. It's so personal. That's why I think like music has music fandoms are way crazier than everything else. Music is in an incredibly powerful medium to convey emotion. And if you, you know, if you feel like this artist gets you, holy fuck, you're just gonna, I mean, you fall in love with them and it's it, to an unhealthy degree. And it spans across the world, too. It's like a global thing. That's why you have so many Americans that uh, are standing K-pop stars, not just Koreans. Uh, that's why you have so many people across the world that, uh, you know, love uh, Frank Ocean this much. I mean, Cutie is a whole-ass, grown-ass adult, dude. Think about that. And she's a fucking stan. She's a stan. She's a Taylor Swift stan. She's a content creator herself and yet still a stan. Like, think about that. That's how powerful it is. Is that why you don't listen to music? You're so different. You can't relate to any artist joker moment. No, I mean, I've, I've listened to a lot of fucking music when I was growing up. And I actually thought that there was something really wrong with my brain personally. Because I couldn't ever, like, feel the same way that, like, so many of my peers felt when they were younger about artists, about their performances. I literally thought that I had like, you know, something wrong with my brain. I thought I was at fault. Now I just don't really give a shit. Like now I don't really give a shit that I, I, I now realize like maybe it's unhealthy to love uh, an artist to that degree. You're not beating the A-worded allegations. I'm just, I don't know. I, but I understand it for the record. I understand why people are like that. I don't have an issue with that. Like, I'm not shitting on them. I'm not like, um, I care about things that are more important or anything like that. I'm not saying that. Instead, you stand LeBron. Okay, like, I, I do, but, you know, not to this. Like, I don't have posters of LeBron. I just think that he's the GOAT, which he is. So I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. It's not like I follow him around and I'm like, constantly thinking about him or anything i just think he's great i think he's the goat which he is both in his private life and also in his private affairs and also uh you know on the basketball court where it matters I think that we all relate to but to have this expectation that this grieving man is going to do something other than phone it in baby tape your expectations because he's never given that ever Oh now, I God. am someone who believes in extending grace when you can. And I do believe Frank Ocean deserves some grace because he did lose his brother. And he did speak about how he and his brother would always go to Coachella, despite him quite literally hating the festival. And I even get why he agreed to perform, because it was his brother's favorite event for them to go to. But this was just a mess all around. And it's really sad to see so many people be negatively affected by this. Not just the fans, but also Frank. I'm sure he's seeing this online right now. After he probably thinks he gave a very emotional performance and really did something that was difficult for him. But also Coachella seeing the negative reaction to this, knowing they have a whole nother weekend to go. For what it's worth, I really do believe he was trying his best to push through. But I think the pressure of it all, the expectations set on him after six years of absence, dealing with the grief of his brother, and honestly not having any new music to promote or put on, really just made this a combination of unfortunate events. And that's why we got what we got. I'm hoping that... We
This is crazy. Saw this TikTok about the performance. The other mess and mayhem of the Freight Ocean set last night, closing out Weekend One of Coachella, is making its way on the timelines. I've seen so many videos of people at the festival, whether they're VIP. Bro, if you're writing this level of fanfic about a dude who you don't know the background of, like about a dude you don't know personally, to like justify his actions, I don't know what to tell you. Like you're you're on the sauce, you know. You have you have gone far beyond. I don't know what it is. I don't know what kind of level of copium this is. It's like nuclear grade. It's crazy. It, it's it's actually not... I, I don't know. Like, I mean, this it's a lot of clicks for this shit right now, so I get it. No, I don't think that's the... That's not... It's not just the clicks, dude. I mean... coming out. All fandoms always make up shit to connect the very few dots that they have. Yeah. It's very interesting in the age of like parasocial content. It's very interesting to see the less people give, the less like artists give, the more fandoms go crazy over it because it's in their minds. It's uh, it's like the dream phenomena. Um, people, people were were uh left to to basically imagine what dream looks like in their minds. You know what I mean? Until the face reveal. And that's one aspect of it. Like the more private you are as a content creator, the more people project their own desires onto who you are. And I think Frank Ocean's uh, fandom uh, suffers from that a little bit. They fill all the gaps. They filled in the gaps with all the info they liked. Yeah. And every aspect of that, every aspect of that, all the, all the gaps uh, that fandoms have, uh, they, the, the, the way they're filling it is not through like, uh, you know, deductive reasoning or anything. They're filling it with their own personal fantasies of who this person is. And therefore, the real person can never meet that expectation. So when push comes to shove uh, and you are faced with the reality of who this person that you have like imagined actually is, you either double down and go way uh, beyond where you go above and beyond to justify uh, bad actions that they're that they're doing and you're like oh there has to be a reason for this or you become a massive hater that's a, that's the other side of it that's the fallen hassan fan uh you know the the hassan stand to to hassan hater pipeline as well where people just like become these like unhinged haters after a long time why because i didn't fucking respond to one of their comments in the chat you know what i mean Frank Ocean gave a speech during his Coachella set. But I have missed you. I want to talk about why I'm here because it's not because of a new album. It's because... Not that there's not a new album, it's like... Okay. <laughs> they were, they no, booed him. It's not right now, it's not right now. But, you know, the last couple years... Um... My life changed so much, and um, we love you, we love you. come on, shh. <laughs> check me out, check me out. So I want to just my brother and I, we came to this festival a lot, mm -hmm. and I feel like I was dragged out here half the time because. I hated the dust out here. I always left with a respiratory infection or whatever. So I, I would like avoid coming in. He would always, I would always end up here. And um, one of my fondest memories is watching Ray Strummer on, I don't know what that stage is called, but watching Ray Strummer with my brother and and Travis. I don't know if Travis or Taco is here, but we were just dancing in that tent uh, to their music and um, I know he would have been so excited to be here with all of us. And See, I didn't know he lost his brother and that they went to Coachella together. Oh my God, I feel so bad for him. And, um, and I want to say thank you for... Um, what happened to his brother? Was it super unexpected? His uh, brother died in a car crash. Ryan Moore, the 18-year-old brother of singer Frank Ocean, who went by the name Ryan Bro, died from blunt force head injuries in a single vehicle or collision early Sunday morning in Thousand Oaks. The Ventura County Medical Examiner confirmed Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. His brother died three years ago to a, a car accident. Problem is, 
it, like, I just don't think he should have taken this. Uh, I don't think he should have performed. The support and the ears and the love over all this time. Uh, and I'm going to get back to these songs. Yeah. He needed the money but didn't want to perform? That's insane, brother. What? I think you're just make What? What do you mean he needed the money? He needed $4 million? Like, what? Like... This is, you're doing the thing that I was talking about where you're just like making up excuses in your mind about like a dude who very famously like last year made like $60,000 cock rings with diamonds on it. What? Am I a performer at the Grammys after her water broke while having contractions and then drove to the hospital straight after Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens performed Grease Live after learning her father died? If an artist cares, they will go above and beyond. That's an insane expectation. That's not what we're talking about here. And you're crazy for, like, even considering that or expecting that from Frank Ocean. That's not what I'm saying at all. That is unhinged on the other side. What the fuck? Or GA basically giving people, like, a full view of what was going on. Now, the first thing we heard last night is that they were not going to be streaming, you know, his set. And people, you know, at home were pissed because they couldn't go to Coachella. So they were hoping to watch the live stream. And that was taken off the line of schedule. You then had people who are actually there telling, you know, people that basically he was over an hour late and a good chunk of his set was him lip syncing or just letting the music play out. He sang about like three songs and then he cut his set short because of curfew. Now, after watching the reactions from people, my initial feeling was like, okay, we all were asking if Frank Ocean was going to perform, you know, this weekend or not especially because he has not posted anything in promotion of his set. I thought, okay, maybe he wasn't ready to come back and perform yet because he's still grieving the loss of his brother. And maybe this was just too soon. But then I got some tea from one of my mutuals on like the PR side of things. And this is what allegedly what happened. This is according to like a subreddit that was posted last night. Let's read it together, kids. I've been speaking with sources about exactly what transpired and how things went so far downhill Sunday for Frank Ocean Coachella. So here you go. The stage production was supposed to and did contain an ice rink that was constructed and ready to go. Frank decided at the last minute that he no longer wanted it at all. All the people walking around him at the start of the performance were actually ice skaters, had been practicing for weeks. Okay, we already saw all this stuff. Get to be are hearing from like in the relationship is not in a good place right now. Now, this is all alleged. This is from what people are hearing from like inside festival sources. I'm going weekend too, so I won't know if he's still going to be there or not until they make like a last minute announcement. But I want to be. What the fuck do you do also if you're. What do you do if you're Coachella? Like for weekend two, what, is he going to just like not perform on weekend two? Like what the fuck's going to happen? Outside their house, you have to be a bit more respectful and considerate now this obviously doesn't set the stage for anything positive like for next weekend is he still going to show up are they still going to want him to perform if the morale is this bad this time around will he feel any remorse and want to do better next time and do the fans have enough self-respect to say fuck him i don't want to see frank ocean now fan dignity is a huge part of why artists kind of do things like this i feel because there's never a point where there's enough of them to put their foot down and say let's just go and i get when you look at it as a whole it's not just dignity it's finances it's time probability like when am i gonna have the time finances resources to be in this position outside of that this very moment in my life it's probably like one in a lifetime for some people and that's unfortunately what a lot of businesses and artists can sometimes intentionally and sometimes unintentionally prey upon your desperation to see this artist and what you could have given up to be here exceeding your own self-respect and want to have a great show from start to finish something memorable the people behind the scenes the performers needing work needing a job being a small asset to a much larger idea i'm hearing he was lips sinking a lot of his songs he awkwardly dancing on stage the crowd didn't really seem to be that into it and he left early even though he had been late in getting there what i saw was also kind of strange because it didn't really seem like a performance it seemed like 
they were watching a movie and not the cinematic kind where everyone's just in shock and awe because the cinematography is just so great not theatrical in any sense of the word it, it honestly felt like this was a pre-recorded studio session that frank ocean had put out this is the danger of this job being an entertainer if you sit at your desk and push keys on a keyboard you can call sick or take a day off if you're a musician and you agree to perform this is not an option what do you mean first of all the average person can't take a day off that's not even true and secondly no like this is the one time where you're supposed to be working dude what the fuck frank ocean doesn't owe anybody shit if we're talking about his personal life and what you want to hear from him what you want to see from him when's the next album blah 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 all this shit okay the reality is that like you don't have to be a fan he's not like forcing you to fucking maintain the fandom it, it's clear that he doesn't even give that much of a shit, right? And I say this as someone who is day in, day out, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to at least entertain some of you, trying to educate some of you. Of course, what he's doing is infinitely uh, cooler and, and uh, way more uh, valid. It's like actually an artistic medium. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not making that comparison, but like I do give, I, as someone who does give his all, uh, to his own fucking fan base to, to make content and to entertain you. Uh, I don't think anyone else, uh, I don't think anyone owes you anything. Okay. However, there is one, there's one aspect to this. When you are, when you've made an obligation after fucking six years, you're supposed to fulfill that commitment on a big screen and show to the people at Coachella. Because from what I saw, it didn't even look like you could see him on stage. What performance? I'm a person who believes that anyone with any kind of following or influence should very much so parent their online interaction. It can make you go crazy. You can end One album in eight years giving it is all. I didn't say that. I did not say that. End up in a world where you're constantly seeking others validation, worried about what people are saying about you, obsessing over opinions of yourself that you just cannot control but i do think there is a piece of interacting with the people who support you so much so that you know when you're doing something that they don't like and if the people that you have to work with aren't telling you or you're not socially aware enough to know when you're disrespecting people's time maybe scrolling through your instagram or your tumblr or your twitter and seeing an angry fan tweet telling you fuck you for ruining that performance i, I used the last of my car insurance money to get here might make you look at it and be like damn that that might have been a little fucked up I, I might not have wanted to do that when you got people wasting their time their resources shit that they can't get back and you don't appear remorseful about it in the slightest yeah, they probably gonna shit on you. I hope Frank apologizes, and if he is back next weekend, does significantly better and puts in more effort. Because again, this was you who signed whatever contract between you and this business. Fulfill your obligations, and if you don't want to do it next time... Fans and chatters acting like they're record execs? No, I think the truth is somewhere in between. Um. Anyway, but finishing off the Frank Ocean thing, okay, you're... Your expectations should be normal, okay? Your expectations from your uh, favorite artists should be whatever they choose to show you. However, yeah, if you fucking, uh, you know, if you, if you go and purchase an album and the album has no music in it, you'd be like, well, what the fuck? You just like, you know, you just fucked me. What is this? Like, you told me that there was an album in here, and I open up the fucking disc, and there's no CD, or there's no music in the CD. Now, obviously, no, that doesn't happen in the world of streaming anymore. I'm not dating myself, but I'm just trying to give you a point of reference for you to understand. And that is basically the same thing here. This is a bit of a scam, okay? Uh, you don't do anything for six years, uh, and then you turn around, and, uh, and, and, you know, this is your Coachella performance. People have paid a lot of money to see you. That's fucked up. That's actually unacceptable. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I think that that is silly. Okay? I, it is. Um, so, like I said, the truth is somewhere in the middle because um, people who want more from him and, uh, who are just like, he's not giving us anything. He's not giving his fandom anything. It's like, okay, well, you know, he's not supposed to. Like, he doesn't have to. He's not holding you at gunpoint to keep being his fan because six years ago you listened to his music and you put it on your sex playlist like I did. You know what I mean? Frank Ocean Radio goes hard in general.
Yeah, he can drop music whenever he wants, but when you agree to a performance, you kind of got to do it. Yep. I have no ill will against Frank Ocean, even though he unfollowed me after I said, oh, the King Jezza, uh, you know, when he was talking about Corbin. Uh, you know, it's fine. It's okay. That's unrelated to the issue. I am being super impartial when I say that. Like promising you're dropping an album and getting all the pre-sales, and then the album is three tracks. Two of them are remixes. The other is an interlude. Yeah. So... He used to follow you? Yes. But it's okay. Like I said, it, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Okay? First of all, again, shouts out to Sean C for a wonderful, brilliant, thoughtful video. He is great. Uh, you know, he's, he's cool. I'm glazing him super hard because I want him to still come on the stream one point. At one point, at some point, it'd be great. You know, go like his video. 